What up, Wes? Today I'm going to review We by the late Russian novelist Yevgeny Zamyatin. Given the authoritative, mind-numbing nature of political rhetoric in the United States, dystopian novels have recently become a more popular genre of fiction. The word dystopia comes from Greek, and it literally means not a good place. So dystopian novels tend to exaggerate societal maladies, and they usually take place on Earth, and they kind of predict what would happen if today's issues spiraled out of control. Some notable dystopian novels include 1984, Fahrenheit 451, and We. We isn't very well known, but it's one of the first dystopian novels um, that really gained a lot of traction. It inspired George Orwell's 1984, and I've read both. They're very similar, and Noam Chomsky claims that We might be one of the best dystopian novels ever written. So obviously I had to check this one out. We was written in 1919 by a Soviet dissident. And it was actually such a controversial piece that it was first published in English and wasn't even allowed in Russia until 1988, 50 years after the author's death. I thoroughly enjoyed this book because the plot is incredibly well crafted and because the author's purpose for writing this book is really clear. It takes place in a fictional society called One State where everyone goes by a number. The main character's name is D503 and he's a mathematician who writes in his journal on a daily basis. And this book is a collection of his daily journal entries. So he writes about the government and its attempt to control everyone purely through logic. And it's an incredibly totalitarian and technocratic regime. And the main character spends his time talking about one state's practices, which he actually considers to be ideal. Everyone wakes up at exactly the same time. People eat their food mechanically and in sync. People even have allotted time for sex, which is seen as a mechanical necessity rather than a form of connection. So in one state, everyone is very highly monitored, which is made easier because literally everything is made out of glass. D503 is very aware and supportive of the controlling nature of one state, and he doesn't see himself as an individual, so he hesitates to use pronouns such as me and I. He sees himself as a cell, a unit of the one state organism, and he doesn't believe in individuality, which is probably why this book is called We. So he attempts to justify why maximum surveillance and control is needed for there to be any happiness in the world. Freedom and creativity are only seen as good for promoting disorder and chaos. So he talks a lot about how he thinks humanity has evolved from the state of total chaos to a more orderly, happy state of control. So throughout this book, the main character struggles to maintain such a regimented and calculated worldview while he's confronted by people, places, ideas that tempt him with disorder and freedom. I don't want to give too much of this book away, um, but it's thrilling and thought-provoking. So this book really conveys a lot of themes. It prompts the reader to think about political dissidence, obedience, privacy, freedom, technology, and religion. and. These are some heavy topics to cram into such a short novel, but somehow this writer makes the main character's thoughts on these topics very palatable and interesting. So the major conflict that drives the story is D-503's struggle to be obedient, while his instincts drive him to indulge in freedom and his curiosity. So. In reading this book, the author seems to be really concerned that our world was turning into this super controlled um, society where logic and calculations prohibit individual freedom. The world hasn't really turned out as he prophesied, but I do think that he did an excellent job achieving the mission of this project. So I'll give a 5 out of 5 for his ability to achieve his goal which I think was to write a thought-provoking dystopian novel that critiques threats to individuality and freedom. 
this book was banned from Soviet Russia, after all, so it has to contain some valuable dissident content. In terms of accessibility, I'll give this book a 4 out of 5. It's relatively short, only about 200 pages, and the language is pretty easy to understand. But translations of this book will vary, but I like the one that I read, uh, the translation by Clarence Brown. So who do I recommend this book to? I think everyone that's interested in dystopian novels should definitely read this book. It's a classic and it's influenced a lot of other uh, dystopian novels to be written. But even if you're new to this genre or don't read this genre very often, I think it's good for people who like to think deeply about uh, societal issues. There's a lot of thought-provoking content in this book that will appeal to a wide range of people, but it isn't so dense that it's not enjoyable. It's actually very thrilling. Thank you so much for listening to my review. I hope to do more reviews in the future, um, but we'll see. Later, bro.